Hi, my name is Marna Benia. I'm the Health and Nutrition Agent for Dickinson County. And today we are bringing you a quick session about the importance of family meal times. As we go through the presentation, I want you to take a couple of minutes to think about how often um, during the week do you sit down for a family meal? There's a lot of different answers that somebody can give. And a lot of the times that we um, have it's trouble scheduling some family meals is because time, time, um, we're always very busy. There's always a bunch of projects happening. Um, so there's a variety of different answers that you can give. But the importance that of why we have family meal times is because um, the benefits that we receive from it. So family meals occurring more often, approximately more than five times per week, are linked to a better mood and better mental health from ages six to 10. Teens are less likely to get into fights. Think about suicide, smoke, drink, and use drugs. They are also more likely to uh, delay sexual activity and have higher academic achievement than adolescents who do not have regular family meals. Children under the age of 13 are found to also have fewer behavioral problems and fewer emotional outbursts when they have more frequent family meals. Adolescents, especially girls, who had frequent structured in a positive at atmosphere during family meals um, are, were shown to be less likely to have disordered eating. And so children overall really develop a higher levels of self-esteem. During family meals, children learn social skills and manners, how to take turns, be polite, and have pleasant conversations with peers and adults. Re research shows that children become emotionally content and work hard at school and have positive peer relationships overall. And they tend to develop stronger family ties and a greater sense of identity and belonging. But they aren't the only ones who benefit. So adults engaged in family mealtimes also receive the benefits in terms of social and emotional well-being. So we as human beings all need that human connection and when we get it, we all seem to thrive. I did want to take a couple of uh, minutes to highlight that family meal times are also linked to better eating habits. The frequency of shared family meals is significantly related to nutritional health in children and adolescents. So children and teens who share in family meals three or more times per week are more likely to be in the normal weight range and have healthier dietary and eating patterns than those who share fewer than three meals together per week. In addition, they also are less likely to engage in disordered eating, as we mentioned before. So there is improved nutrition. So this is true for all children, regardless of their ethnicity or socioeconomic background. So family meals are associated with improved intakes of fruits, vegetables, grains, um, calcium-rich foods, protein, iron, fiber, a fiber, and et cetera. So children who eat meals with their families also have a lower intake of soft drinks and snack foods that have added sugars and little to no essential nutrients. There was one study done, um, it was a 10 year follow-up study to over 2000 adolescents that showed that overall 51% were overweight, 22% were obese. So among those who reported never eating family meals, 60% were overweight and 29% were obese. So when we start to think about those um, percentages, it's, it's, it's very drastic um, how the important it is to actually sit down for family meals. So researchers believed um, in the study that family meals may be protective against obesity or um, because coming together for family meals may provide opportunities for the emotional connections among family members. And the food is more likely to be nutritious and parents may model healthy eating habits. So overall, as you can see, there is a tremendous amount of benefits that we, uh, when we engage in these family meals. But what is a family meal time? So family meal time is defined as a time when those we consider as part of our family to share a meal together. So family can include blood relatives, adoptive or foster children, and fictive kin. Fictive kin is usually defined as non-biological family members. So to put it in real terms, think of the 
uh, uncle or the aunts that some people are to you or they are to your children. You might not actually be related by blood, but there is a high likelihood that many of these fictive kin um, are, will actually see your children more often than their actual blood relatives. Uh, these fictive kin relationships often serve important functional and emotional roles for the members of the family. So in this lesson, anytime we refer to family, we include fictive kin. So we recognize that the parent role um, can also be filled by non-blood relatives or blood relatives who are not actually their biological parents. So when we talk about the family meal time, it is who you consider family to yourself and to your family. So meal times can also be during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, any other time when families engage in the act of preparing or eating meals together, the most important thing to remember is when will my family be available to share a meal? Because the important part is making sure that you're all there together. And just thinking about family meal times as only as evening meal really limits you. So be very intentional about knowing what each other's schedules are in order to schedule a time to sit down and eat. So being intentional is one of the main characteristics of the family meal time. So positive conversations with your families really set the foundation for conversations outside of the family. Uh, be present, model behavior, and be focused are the three important po points of the family meal time. So eating nutritious food is incredibly important for our bodies and our mind. However, if nutrition were the only goal, there would be no point in just sitting down and coming together because the benefits of family meal time come from eating, from meeting the need for food and for fulfilling the need to engage with others. So be present. Before your family meal begins, take a few seconds to be mindful of what you want to achieve through your meal. So this will be hard at first. You might think, I just want to make it through this meal. But by taking a few seconds to think about what you want to accomplish and how you want to do that, um, you will have taken the first step to being successful at this. And also model behavior. So during mealtimes, parents model that family time is important, that eating is something that you want to do together. The things that you talk about reflect about the culture, the values and beliefs as a family. So as you share the meal, you're also modeling making healthy choices, so respectful manners and behaviors and household responsibilities. So for example, um, asking your child, child Joe, would you please pass the broccoli? It both demonstrates the respectful way of asking for food and it signals that you like broccoli, a healthy food. And being focused is also really important. This can be difficult, especially for families with adolescents or young children, um, as sometimes attention is hard to maintain. Most importantly, everyone should avoid using screen, your phone, at a meal, and this includes um, television, any type of uh, media, social media. Screens are not inherently harmful, but they have been shown to dramatically limit conversation. And family meals are beneficial because of the conversations that we're able to have with one another. So how do we involve our children in the kitchen without wanting to pull our hair? So remember, every child is different. Young children learn best through play and hands-on experiences. So it is important to remember that each child develops at his or her own pace. This means some children will display interest or capabilities to participate in certain types of activities earlier or later than other children who are the same chronological or numerical age. Young children use their natural curiosity as they explore the world around them, and this includes the experiences of cooking and eating. So the early childhood years are a natural time to capitalize on this curiosity and lay a foundation of healthy eating habits. So I will email out um, the handouts where they will be uploaded to our website at all, but we're gonna take a couple minutes to look at the handout and see what is developmentally appropriate for children. So on the screen, you can see I've broken it down to ages, but we'll break down and talk a little bit about different activities for each age group. So for the ages of three to five, 
uh, children can help slice soft fruit uh, or veggies such as bananas or strawberries and melons with a plastic knife, or they can tear lettuce or other greens. They can use cookie cutters, mix simple ingredients. At this age, toddlers love to explore and help in the kitchen and will need to be closely supervised. When we move to the ages between five to seven, they can crack an egg into a bowl, carefully use the vegetable peeler, uh, stir and prepare instant pudding, prepare lettuce for a salad. So kids really can begin to be, have more complex complex kitchen tasks at this point as their fine motor skills further develop around this age. Between the ages of eight to 10, they can rinse and wash fruits and vegetables, use a can opener, uh, beat eggs, mix and measure dry ingredients, and introduce a food thermometer. Uh, the skills and abilities between this age range tend to vary, so tailor cooking and tasks to the child's maturity level. Between the ages 12 to 13, they can start to boil and cook pasta and vegetables, um, simmer ingredients on the stove top, follow a step-by-step -step recipe, and slice and chop fruit veggies. So really at this age, help preteens feel independent in the kitchen by providing them with more responsibilities, but still keeping an eye on them. And lastly, older teens will be ready to take on the challenge of mastering different equipment in the kitchen, but make sure that they know proper safety skills before starting. So tips such as which dishes are safe to use in the oven, um, keeping fingers away from sharp objects, and how to handle raw food are important to point out. Here are some skills that they'll be able to handle um, based on their maturity level. So bake on their own. So many teens like to make cookies at this point with their friends. Um, use sharp knives, learn to use various kitchen gadgets, gadgets including a blender, a food processor, a garlic press, a coffee maker. Um, also share safety tips and supervise them on their early attempts as they explore the kitchen even further. Um, if they're up to the challenge, designate one dinner a week as their night to be the lead cook. So they'll have the opportunity to build a menu and show off their skills to the family. This will help them build confidence and give them a sense of accomplishment and also give you the night off. Make sure you talk about food safety throughout the process though. This is extremely important and never really assume they already know and to give little reminders here and there. Um, in another sense, to think about is how many times do we have to remind our significant others to do something? A lot. So keep in mind that when reminding our little ones, they're human too, and they're going to need constant reminders. With older kiddos, uh, when teaching basic cleaning skills, talk about how to load, run, and empty the dishwasher, sort recycling, take out the trash, sweep and mop the floor. Um, also, you want to mention this as a uh, as well as making sure that you keep engaged with your, with your child. Um, ask your children questions to engage in conversation with them, such as, you know, what different colors do you see for your little ones? And, or what would you like to learn more about the different spices? And this is what the spice is really good for, for older kiddos, to keep them engaged in a conversation as you work through the kitchen. When possible, try to assign tasks um, or find ones that best suit your child. So for example, if your child is more active, choose a chore that you like to do outdoors, uh, like pack a picnic. If your child prefers more quiet activities, have them set the table. Um, just finding what works best for your child. Have realistic expectations and being intentional about giving support in the beginning is going to be extremely beneficial. It may take several several attempts before they learn to do the tasks you set them to do without supervision and doing it on their own. It may be years before they do it with no reminders and no supervision. Also if life is really hectic and chaotic it's probably not the best time to start a new task. 
starting in a calm and happy environment will set a more positive tone and not add negative connotation to the task that you assign. One of the most effective ways to engage with your child is to give them some say in what they like. So children like when their voices are being heard, participate in, give, in a give and take discussion about what meal to make. And lastly, remember to always teach, teach, and teach some more. The kitchen is the perfect opportunity to demonstrate new tasks and provide learning opportunities. Praise them for trying to learn with you. It'll build confidence in the kitchen for years to come. So that is just the small PowerPoint that we have created for you. Um, we wanna thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video and learn more about the importance of family meal times. Um, if you need any more information, please feel free to contact our office. Our contact information is here at the very end, and we hope to hear from you soon.